Hey guys, <clears throat> it's Brittany, and I just wanted to try and film a video. I'm in my pajamas right now. My husband, he's at the racetrack, and I just got a new computer, so that's what I'm going to try to film with. I'm not sure if it's going to be good quality or not, but it should because this computer is brand new, and it wasn't that expensive, but it was a good one. I needed a new computer. My computer was getting old, and yeah. It just, it was a good computer, but for YouTube and things, I needed something a little more updated. But anyway, I just wanted to come on here and um, talk to you guys about some things I've had on my mind lately. And some things that would be beneficial to you guys. Um, other on my other channel, which for some weird reason, the email address got hacked. And I posted a video called my anxiety and depression story or something like that and I also posted one about bullying <coughs> excuse me and I just wanted to um, come on here and maybe tell you all my story and post it on this channel and maybe I can help some of you all out because I know that when I filmed that video I was in a worse mental state than I am right now and I can say that I'm almost 100% better um, if y'all didn't know I was, sorry, there's something on my keyboard here. I was a preemie. And I only weighed a pound and four ounces when I was born. My mom had, she had preeclampsia. Which, um, I'm not exactly 100% positive about what it is. But, like, she gained, like, 90 pounds of water. And I know that she had to be flown out when she was giving birth to me. And she couldn't carry me full time. We both almost died. And I was... I was really tiny and she said that um, I was only on oxygen for a few hours I had a heart murmur um, I'm not sure what kind it was either I don't really know but it closed when I was four so um, you know um, it was hard being a preemie I guess you know I mean I don't know exactly the struggles but you know my cousin she has a preemie that weighed exactly what I weighed but she was a little bit earlier than I was and, um, Josie Duggar, she was really, really early, and I think she had more trouble than I had, and I was born in 88, back before, you know, technology and things is the way it is now. But, yeah, when I was a baby, my granny, God rest her soul, she would say to my mom, you know, like, that baby's shaking, you know, um, she's cold, mom... Mom would say, no, she's cold. And Granny would say, that's that baby's nerves. You know, she didn't think anything of it. And, um, she would read to me. And, um, I guess where she was afraid that I would have maybe a learning disability when I got in school. And she just tried to, you know, teach me where I was. Be I was far behind developing, like, walking, um, crawling, cutting teeth, potty training, all that, so she, I guess she was just scared, and I learned my colors, how to use a computer, my ABCs, all the, like, things that you should know when you're in preschool, before I ever set foot in a school, and, um, I had real bad separation anxiety issues when I was little, because of the fact, I guess, where it was just always me and my mom and dad, and, School was really difficult for me, so I remember, I think I went three days when I was in kindergarten, and she took me out. My dad, he had had a seizure, and my dad was really young at that time, and um, it just stressed me out. Mom was like, I can't deal with this. I'll just let you go back next year. So, even though I started school a year late, I was very, way smaller than all the other kids in my grade, and... But as far as, you know, like learning, I was ahead of everybody. And they wanted to skip me a grade. But I went to the grade and I, I missed my friends, you know, in kindergarten. So I went back. And then, <coughs> I'll fast forward a couple of years. Um, my mom saw that I was developing early. As far as, you know, girls and puberty and all that stuff. And, you know, she's saying that I was getting boobs. Really, it was like my boobs just went like that overnight. And, 
you know, she had to explain the period, what a period is, and all that sort of thing. And by the time I was in fourth grade, I was already a B. And I was so small. And I would get picked on, and people would be like, you stuff your bra, and things like that. You know, and I was so, so uncomfortable because from like fourth grade to eighth grade was how my school was. It was from kindergarten to eighth grade. And then you went on to high school. I had the biggest breast of all the girls and people would just look at, you know, it was traumatizing for me in a way because I wasn't comfortable, you know, with my body at that age. I was only 10, 11. I was just a baby. You know, and then I moved schools for middle school because my dad had uh, got a new job when I was in third grade and it was closer to his work. And it was kind of, it's not really a private school. It was more of like a, um, a city school, I guess, but where the more prominent people went to school. And my, my sixth grade year was okay. I didn't really get picked on then, and then from like eighth grade up, like at that school, I got picked on every single day for no absolute reason, and it just, it really hurt me because I didn't understand, you know, why people was picking on me, uh, you know, I was always different, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't have like, I was social, but I didn't have any siblings, so I guess it was kind of hard for me to make friends in a way because, you know, I was very independent as far as, like, playing and stuff. Like, I didn't have to have people around me to be happy. <clears throat> so, um, you know, I would if I wanted to read a book, I would read a book at school, you know, and people would just be like, look at me kind of weird because I had different interests than I had. Like, I was interested in technology and typical what they would think is geeky and I got picked on for that I got picked on for the way I dressed even though I dressed like everybody else it's just stupid things and I guess because I didn't get acceptance from my female friends I knew that I could get acceptance from boys and I got my first little boyfriend when I was 13, you know, I hadn't, it was real innocent, you know, we didn't see each other a lot, I mean, it terrified me to even hold a boy's hand at that time, and then, when I was in, uh, seventh grade, I was 14, I had my first kiss, and, you know, we, um, that was all, all that happened at that age, but, um, we had, we dated for probably four months or so, and then we broke up, and I was just so heartbroken, and then, you know, I started having real bad anxiety, and, like, my body would, like, posture up, and then I would, like, my head would go, like, I was having, like, many seizures, and then finally, when I was 14, we were sitting at the dinner table, me and my mom and dad, and we were eating steak, and the last thing I remember was getting a bite of that steak, and my parents said that, <clears throat> My eyes rolled back in my head, and I was jerking, and they put me on the living room floor, and my dad got a, a piece of steak out of my mouth to make sure I didn't choke on it, and then I remember waking up in the ambulance and being like, what happened? You know, I'm fine, you know, and then I was, I can remember being really, really sore, I guess, where your muscles, like, jerk up, and then, like, not have, remembering things for, like, three months, and then... You know, it just kept on and kept on and kept on. The more I looked for male attention and having breakups and thinking there's something wrong with me uh, and things like that. And I hate to be conceited or, you know, sound weird, but I had what most girls would consider to be the perfect body. I was skinny. I had big boobs, you know, and... It's weird because now that I have gained weight and I'm not at like an ideal place, you know, physically healthy wise, well not physically, but like body wise, um, 
I was more, I'm more happy now than I was then, even when I was skinny, you know, and, um, <clears throat> and just as think time, time went on, you know, things just kept getting worse and worse and worse, because I looked to boys for happiness, and I would, if I lost a boy, like, that I thought I cared about at that time, I would try to replace them with material things, like getting a new phone, a new game system, whatever the case may be, I tried to, um, replace what I thought I was missing with a material item, and I, you all are going to think this girl's nuts, but wait until I finish my story, uh, um, when I was 17, I, um, went out on a date with this guy, and I ultimately lost my virginity to him, and it broke me, because I wasn't ready, you know, mentally, physically, whatever, and, and in some cases, I do feel like he took advantage of me, because he knew I was a virgin, he should have known that since we weren't in a serious relationship, or that, that I would regret it, and, um, it was something that I struggled with for years, and I had had many opportunities before that to have sex, but I chose not to. I knew I wasn't ready, and even then I wasn't, and it just really messed with my mind, and so in my 20s, you know, late teens, early 20s, I should say, I thought that if I gave guys sex, that they would stay because they wouldn't have a reason to go somewhere else. That's not the case. Don't ever try to um, think that you're going to keep a guy just because you have sex with him. It doesn't work that way at all. Believe me, I've been there and done that. And it just, it makes things ten times worse. And I ended up not graduating high school because I dated a boy when I was like 16. Or no, I was 18 and he was 16 and things didn't end well. And I ended up having a class with him my senior year. And it was not only that, but it's other things. And I just, I could not handle the stress of being around so many, so much drama. And I really do miss the learning aspect of school because I could have done good if I didn't have my head up some boy's butt. I mean, that's just the way it is. And I've been on medication since I was 14, since I started having seizures, and <clears throat> after I graduated, I met a guy that worked with my dad, and at the time, I thought I loved him, or maybe, my, I'm, I'm just going to say, I did love him, I, was I in love with him, no, no, not at all, and you know, I'm, I'm just not sure where this video is going, I'm sorry, it's all over the place, I'm just trying to gather my thoughts, and to tell you what's helped me in my struggle with it and um but anyway I met him and we were we were pretty serious I was 20 he was 23 and he just he tried to control everything I did he was scared to death that I was if I was on the computer that I was going to find another man and run off with him like his mom did his mom um left his dad and him and his brother for a woman, or a woman, a man in California, and he tried to compare me to her, and not only that, he tried to control, like, what I wore, if I wore anything low-cut at all, he would be like, we need to put more clothes on, he tried to throw all my clothes away, um, I couldn't be on the computer, he had to see what I was doing, <clears throat> he, um, tried to tell me who I could go places with, where I couldn't go, it was just a bad situation, and I really, really hope that he's not like that now, um, and we ended up breaking up, and it just completely broke me, we were, the reason that we broke up was because you all know that I probably smoke cigarettes, it's not healthy, and I would like to quit, but I just really don't have the honest desire to quit right now. Both my parents smoke and I guess I just picked up the habit because they do. I don't know. But um 
Anyway, he tried to say either I quit smoking or he leaves. Well, I had quit smoking. And they called and told me that, or they being like other family members, told me that they had given up on my grandma and she wasn't going to live very much longer. And me and her were like this. I was her baby growing up. Because she was our, she just lived right above us and I was there every single day. And it just, it broke me. And he seen me with, or he came in after work and saw me with a cigarette and just said, bye, pretty much. And it tore me apart. It made my self-esteem go down the toilet. Because I thought, well, I can't keep nobody, you know. And I don't know why. Looking back, I wanted to smack myself for some of the things that I thought about myself. And then, I started having panic attacks because of him. Because he worked, you know, with my dad. And where my parents live, they live right beside of the, um, the building where they work. So, I would see his vehicle or I would see him. And it just, for some reason, it sent me into a panic. And um, I went to the doctor and they gave me medicine for it. And then, fast forward to 2011, I met my husband. And the first year or so of our relationship, it was good. But I still wasn't in a very good mental state. Like, I would try to feel, have these big pity parties for myself because of all the things that I didn't achieve in life that I wanted to achieve. Or that I didn't have the means to achieve. And instead of looking at, hey... You know, you've never washed clothes in your life. You've never cooked a meal in your life. You've never took care of a house. And now you do everything. And you take care of not only yourself, but your husband and your dog. You know. And then, what was making me do that was just inexperience. Because I had always seen the family dynamic of my mom and dad together. I had never seen a broken home, which is where my, my husband comes from. His parents aren't together. And, you know, I never seen any how other families worked or didn't work past my own family. I had never been responsible for anything. I never managed money. I had never, um, you know, been responsible for myself. And then um, I was also on a medicine called Seroquel. And I didn't need the medicine. So it made... Excuse me. It had the opposite effect of what it was supposed to. So it made me that way. I mean, it made me so depressed. And then, you know, after I start seeing things and things that happen that I don't really prefer to talk about nothing bad but good things. And just seeing, you know, what God had meant for me. I realized, you know, I've come a long, long way from when I was... 23 years old even 24 and um and not only that but just the medicine that I take has helped me and it's had a more positive effect on me and just having a more positive as a positive outlook on life you know I don't get stressed out very often anymore I don't panic as much as I used to I used to have all these negative thoughts what if or what if this happens? What if this don't happen? Things like that. And it was just brutal on my mental health. And, you know, now I thank God for everything, no matter how small. Because I've seen people who have done without things that they need. Or have a different kind of life than I do. <clears throat> or they're less fortunate than me. You know, I may not have the most fanciest car or the fanciest house. But it's my house and my car and my life. And I adore my life. I really do. I, I'm so thankful for the life that I live every single day. And that's another thing, just to be so, just to be thankful. Because, yeah, I know there are people that were less fortunate than me before I was on my own. But I really didn't know until I saw it for myself. And just for my amazing family, my extended family, and just everything, I'm just so thankful. And you, um, I don't want to say pray, but another thing that has helped me is my relationship with the Lord. I am a Christian, and He has blessed me in so many ways, just by 
given me the life that I have on this earth is enough alone to be thankful and grateful to him. <clears throat> and I just hope that some of this helps you all. Like there were many times when I was suicidal, so many times, and um, I now know that God kept me here for a reason. And that reason is to be Chevelle's mommy and Tony's wife and I'm just I'm just so thankful and so happy for my amazing life and I'm sorry this video is kind of all over the place um I just hope it helps some of you all and another thing exercising helps um I don't exercise nearly enough but just accomplishing things that you never imagined you thought you would and you know I mean if any of you are struggling y'all can talk to me and as far as bullies go, I guess what you can do is just kind of ignore them and realize that those people that was in high school or middle school or wherever aren't going to matter when you leave that school. I promise you. Because half, the, not even half, but like all of the people I went to school with, I don't even talk to. I don't pay no mind to. You know, they have their own lives. And... Some of them have have apologized to me since, since you know, growing up and realizing that what they did to me is wrong. But you just need to realize, you know, high school is just four years of your life. You know, it's not your whole life. And I know when you're in school, it just feels like, oh, my gosh, you know, is this ever going to end? And bullies are just cowards, you know. I mean, they have issues in their within their self and in their head that they need to take care of because they're the ones that's bringing everybody else down with them. Misery loves company. That's just how it is. And you don't need to feed into that. Just know that you are amazing and you are beautiful. Like I have days where I feel like I'm the hottest thing since sauce bread and then days when I feel like I'm the ugliest thing since I don't know, Shrek. But <laughs> Um, yeah, I just, I'm sorry that this video was all over the place. i just got to get back into the swing of filming because I am kind of a little bit, you know, my thoughts aren't gathered, I guess. I should have maybe made some notes before I sat down to make this video, but I hope this quality is okay. I hope this video was helpful in some way. If y'all have any questions, you can email me or tweet me or Instagram me or Facebook me, and I will be sure to talk to you as best as I can but I'm gonna go and I'll talk to you guys in my next video be thrifty and stay fabulous bye guys